fat puppy here and I am not at all where I want it to be when I do this video. I'm actually at my pic picnic table in my backyard. My story today is about Thomas Sumter, the title Zero to Hero. And the reason why I'm here instead of at the cemetery is because I recorded at the cemetery this morning and uh, due to some kind of glitch, it didn't record properly. And when I got home and started to edit everything, it was just all wrong. Well, it took me a while to record it, even though it may only be a 10 or 15 minute video. It took me a while to record it, and it took me a while to get there and a while to get back, and I just don't have that much time left in the day. And today's the only day I can record this until next week, and I want to get this out there. So, like I said, <clears throat> I was out at the Thomas Sumter Memorial, where uh, it's the old Thomas Sumter family graveyard. And obviously the story is about Thomas Sumter. Now, who was Thomas Sumter? Thomas Sumter was a Revolutionary War hero uh, from this area. Well, actually from Virginia, but he ended up settling in this area. And he'd done great exploits and was a big, huge thorn in the side of the British. And uh, I'm just going to go over his uh, little bit of his life story. Up now, to be honest with you, there's been books written about him. And I, obviously, I'm not going to get near the detail that they would. And some people may even feel like I'm missing something. You're right, I am. So he was born August of 1734 in Virginia. Uh, he died June of 1832 in the Statesburg area of South Carolina. Uh, the Statesburg area is, is uh, in what is now known as Sumter County, a county named after him, um, outside of Sumter City, also named after him. Um, he was the last Revolutionary War officer to die. He died at the age of 98, I think it was. Uh, he was born and raised in Virginia. He was um, unconventional, let me put it that way. He did like to gamble. Uh, it wasn't a huge vice, but he did like to gamble at the uh, racetrack for the horses, racetrack for the dogs, and cockfighting. Now, I know cockfighting, uh, it offends our sensibilities now, but uh, a big thing we got to remember is we can't judge people today on what happened years and years and years ago because the because uh, you don't know the time they were in and what was perfectly socially acceptable and yes cock fight, fighting is a cruel sport just like dog fighting and i wholeheartedly disagree with um, any of it he liked a good fight uh, he was adventurous and he liked a good fight so around when he was 20 or 21 years old he joined the virginia militia and the virginia militia got involved in the Anglo-Cherokee War. Now, what was the Anglo-Cherokee War? Basically, it was a spinoff of the French-Indian War. So the French-Indian War, um, remember that um, Virginia was part of the colonies, you know, the British colonies. And um, so the British and the Indians were initially on the same side with this against the French. Um, but they quickly uh, learned to not trust each other, and that caused its own little war. So at the end of this war, in an effort to make peace and to make things right again, Thomas Sumter, um, he joined the Timber, yeah, Timber Lake Expedition. The purpose of this expedition was to go and make peace with those Indians, and, uh, and they uh, had uh, peace. Uh, pulled out the uh, peace pipe and had peace conferences. Um, the main leader of the Indians was a chief named Ostinaco. And I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure I'm not. Um, the name means man killer. And this was a reputation he had when he was younger. At this time, he's actually a diplomat. He wanted to meet the king. So the expedition lasted a year and a half. After the expedition, General Thomas Sumter, which he wasn't a general at the time, Thomas Sumter, borrowed money, got a crew together, and uh, took Ostinaco, and Ostinaco had two friends he took with him. So altogether, it was three of the Indians that went to meet the king. They went to London. Um, they were a hit. They were a hit in London. They were very popular. They drew crowds. Um, you know, nobody's seen an Indian. So that, that was a, an oddity, you could say. So, 
to meet the king. Remember, Thomas Sumter had to borrow money. Well, when he come back, uh, he landed in Charleston, South Carolina at the port. At least that's how I'm assuming he ended up in South Carolina because he was uh, in financial trouble. So he tried to get the Virginia legislature to reimburse the money to pay the guy that he had borrowed, but they wouldn't do it. So he ended up going to Virginia and getting thrown in debtor's prison. You know, back then they didn't have um, credit reports and all that to, uh, uh, to get you in trouble with, if you want to call it that. They would lock you up, and a lot of times you would stay locked up until that money was paid. We had a friend come visit him. His friend's name um, was... i got to turn the page here. Old Bob Seeger song to turn the page. Anyway, uh, his friend's name was Joseph Martin, and he paid a visit to him and gave him a tomahawk and gave him the money to um, pay the debt. So Thomas Sumter traveled to Utah Springs, South Carolina. This is where Utahville, South Carolina is now, and I think part of it's under the lake now. There's a lake there, uh, Santee Lake. Lake Marion is its proper name. Everybody just calls it Santee Lake. So this is also the home of Francis Marion, known as the Swamp Fox. So Thomas Sumter opened a general store. Somewhere in this time, he met a widow. And I would like to say young widow or a young lady, but, but she wasn't. You know, I'm sure he wasn't all that old himself. She was 12 years older than he was, and she was wealthy. She was the widow of a man named Jameson. I, I never did catch the first name. And her name, um, by the way, she was from the Manning area. Uh, at that time, it wasn't called Manning. Uh, but from the Manning area of South Carolina. And her name was Mary Canty Jameson. And I don't know if she come from a wealthy family or if Mr. Jameson dying made her wealthy, but Thomas Sumter married into some money, some really big money. Well, along come the revolution. He joined the revolution. He went to fight in Charleston. We lost. Charleston uh, was owned by the British, basically. They set up camp there and, and they did a lot of their operations from there. That was their southern headquarters, I guess you could say. Thomas Sumter quit and went home. Now, I don't know if um, um, if he quit because he just said, this is <laughs> just not going to work, or if he just needed to get back to the farm because it's that time of the year. I, I really don't know the circumstances. However, uh, the British general, and I hope I don't mess up this name. I'm sure I will, though. Bannister Tarleton. I'm sure I got Tarleton right. That first name is going to get me, though. Um, I don't know if he was chasing Thomas Sumter or if he was just coming through and knew this is where Thomas Sumter was. And he asked for Thomas Sumter. Uh, and Thomas Sumter went home. He had left, was out doing something else. So I forgot to mention uh, Mary Canty Jameson Sumter was crippled. She was handicapped. And, and I don't think she could walk, from what I understand. Because what happened was General Tarleton was uh, decided to teach Sumter a lesson and burnt down his house. They had to carry her in the chair outside the house and she had to watch her house burn down. Thomas Sumter returned and he was furious and he decided now is the time to get in the war. By the way, the movie The Patriot is loosely based on him and on Francis Marion, uh, the Swamp Fox. Um, loosely based. So, Thomas Sumter's house was burnt down, and Thomas Sumter, he was now all in. Well, I don't know what he entered as, but he became a general. Now, their style of fighting was guerrilla fighting. Uh, him and the Swamp Fox, which is how the Swamp Fox got his name. Um, they would be, they would harass. They would harass the British troops. They would invade from the swamp, pull back. They, they couldn't go into the swamps to get them. And they, they continually did this. And it was a very effective method. Now, if I could read to you, General Tarleton said that Thomas Sumter felt like a gamecock. Well, from then on, he was called the fighting gamecock. Um, as a matter of fact, the University of South Carolina, the original USC, uh, they're called the gamecocks from uh, Thomas Sumter. 
Lord Cornwallis said that he was his greatest plague. So, uh, by the way, General Tarleton, you know, not a hero here. Nobody here likes him. But for some reason, less than a half mile from the Thomas Sumter Memorial Park is a street called Tarleton Circle. Why? I don't know. Blows my mind. Um, I, I just don't know. I guess they wouldn't do all things colonial in that little subdivision or something. I don't know. I wouldn't have done it. So, um, Tom Sumner built a house, and he called it Home Place, with the idea being that none of his descendants would be without a home, that it was supposed to pass on, pass on, pass on. And I'm going to get back to that house in a little bit, because that ended up not happening. Thomas Sumter was respected by his superiors, but he was not well liked because he liked to do things his own way. I don't recall reading anywhere that he disobeyed any direct orders, but he just kind of ignored advice, I guess you could say. So he wasn't real liked, not very well liked. So he was land rich. He had 150,000 acres, but cash poor. Uh, over a period of time, he would sell that land to try to pay bills. Now, getting on with the house, grandsons, three grandsons, two of them go off to fight in war. I think it was Spanish-American War, but I'm not a Mexican or Mexican War. I'm not sure it was one of those wars. And one got left behind. His name was Sebastian Sumter, if I remember correctly. Well, given that all three lived in the house with their families, I assume, Sebastian decided that we don't all need to live together. So he tore down the house and built his own house out of that wood and left wood for the other two to build their, their houses, which never got built. By the way, that house burnt down in the 1930s. My understanding is that the um, foundation is still there, but it is um, behind a fence and you have to climb the fence to get to it. And I'm not trespassing on anybody's land, even though I have been invited to go take a look. And, and soon I'll do that, I hope. So, like I said, he died June 1st, 1832, and he was the last Revolutionary War officer to die. Yeah, that's right. So look here. Fat Puppy's my name. Spread this is the game. How you like that? Uh, subscribe, uh, give likes, and uh, share this with your friends, and let's grow this channel. Thank you.